Oh, nice little bee reversal there. Good afternoon, welcome to Wild About Nature. I'm standing here looking at all my habitats I've made over the last few years. And I've just finished another four off, just little ones. And I was thinking, what would I want to know if I was in the process of going to make a habitat? And also, what have I learned? Because there are loads of mistakes you can make, even with something that seems relatively simple to do. And you can see here, I've got loads of different designs over the years, some which are relatively easy, some are very difficult, some which look simple and some which look really complicated. There's a lot of value in making it an aesthetically pleasing habitat or habitat. Sorry, I keep saying habitat because that's the name of my tiny little business that I make habitats for people with and uh, that money goes to charity. But I honestly didn't say it so that I could plug myself. Um, but I will say it a lot because I'm in the habit of saying it. You know, some are complex like this one and they look lovely though and there's a lot of value in that. You know, if, you, if it's in your garden and you're trying to find that equilibrium between a wildlife garden and some sort of sanitised garden, you know, it doesn't hurt if, you, if it looks nice and some of mine look lovely and some of them are just functional. Like these guys, they're, you know, purely functional. But this one is a little bit more elaborate. So I thought, what if I could only make one habitat habitat go on, doing it again and um, then what would I make and I I guess if you're weighing up looks and how you know functional they are for the bees which is the most important thing what would I choose if I could only make one now this one here for instance has been so successful I tried putting a roof at every level and it's completely worked because it's just as it's doing you know just as well at the bottom, you can see there the holes are kind of filled out. As it is halfway up, there's holes being used and towards the top, although the very top is always the most successful. I'll take you back to this one, the monster. You can see here, the bottom does get used occasionally, but as, I, as you go up, you can see more and more holes are being used. And right at the top, I mean, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? I'd say 70-80% of the holes in there have been used and they're being used right now. So this one actually will be sawn into four bits soon. Uh, it'd be a travesty doing it, but I'm going to put a roof on every level so that it just makes it more functional. And that is the bottom line. You've got to make it good for bees and position it plays a big part of that. I've got videos out there about, you know, things I've learned and that, but I was thinking if you really, obviously you can't go to the lengths I've gone to making loads of different ones and what would I choose if I could only make one if time was a factor and cost was a factor and you had to recycle and all the rest of it what would I make and the answer is this one and as if by magic there's two male bees having a fight in front of it um, these are just awesome they're made from trees so there's nothing been no wood has been gone through a sawmill and been prepared or treated it's purely from trees that have been felled and I go along and I say can I have some of your wood and I chop it up and I make one they are extremely functional no matter what position you put these in you'll always get bees as long as you put enough different holes and it's in a sheltered location and you've got all the boxes ticked for where you put it in nice sun you know sunlight in the morning or afternoon depending on what species you've got and while we're on the subject of that you can see here this is serving both species last year it was facing east and you can see there they've gone brown now but they are leaf entryways uh, or the you know the final door on the front are all leaves in the biggest holes they're the 10 mil ones or maybe 9 10 mil and they're leaf cutters so they will come out this year they're not out yet leaf cutters it's a bit early but the two bees you saw fighting in front were red mason bees and there's one there and they're using it as well and at the moment it's facing south and that will predominantly be red masons and if you face it west it will be red masons they seem to prefer the heat in the afternoon whereas leaf cutters on this whole wall i don't have 
any leaf cutters so that is certainly a mistake or something I've learned I won't call it a mistake it's something I've learned over the years and it's mainly because that's all the only place I could put them but I also have we'll go down there right in the other corner of my garden facing east I started a couple of years ago to put some the other way because I want to I realized about the leaf cutter thing and I want to get as many species going as I can so these ones are really successful and oh, there you go I mean that's an Osmia rufa or Osmia bicornis going in there and that's facing east so whereas leaf cutters definitely prefer east red mason bees will do both so if you have a preference I would go east or south that is the way to go with any placement of a bit a bug hotel or an insect hotel so and, uh, and just while we're here have I got any in there this year now that that one there the really tall one you can see I've put levels in I had the same problem as the monster one up there too high too much water splashing on it so I put in individual levels and that's definitely worked so back to which one would I make if I could only make one it's definitely those and and uh, kind of because of that I've just made four one is over there and I've just made this one the other day which is all again recycled wood that's vinyl flooring on the roof just a slight angle on it these two are on kind of nails for feet underneath they're tilted forward as well the roof's overhanging and you shouldn't get too much water splashing back if I do find that they're getting a bit wet at the bottom then put them on the edge of something so find an edge or a ledge and just place it on the edge of it and that minimizes the water splashing back see these holes are really big in this one they will be predominantly leaf cutters and I'm trying it out southwest uh, yeah southwest never reach ready we southwest so I don't know if that's going to be successful but we can always move it but these ones and we'll, we'll come back to this you can see there's no bees buzzing around them at all and that's because the red masons are out but the mega chili or the leaf cutters are not out yet but I I would put money on those being really successful and they're facing I guess east southeast if that's the right that's the right terminology just south of east and I think they're going to be great so I've just made those three and the other one over there so if I could only make one that's what I would make recycled wood recycled roof a few old nails saw a chunk off draw loads of holes sand it off bit of wood glue on the front just to seal it put a roof on nails done they're about those bottom two are about 45 minutes each once you get in the hang of it top one an hour it's a little bit more elaborate I just had a chunk of wood to put on the back but really if I had to go for those or those the bottom two definitely because they're off off the ground and you can put them in more places so that's definitely what I would do and they don't look bad do they they're not that ugly but um you know if, if you want to make something that is a feature of your garden and a talking piece then you're looking for something like like this really which is I guess the best looking one in the garden and there's a parasitical wasp on there it's just flown off yeah this one's lovely and you can have some real fun with it and make some stuff like that there is laminate flooring it's just a over winter chambers for ladybirds and lace wings and stuff like that but I don't know if they use it it's just fun making it that'll be quite good this year it's a little bit in a shady position but I only finished that late last year in fact it was one of the first ones I ever did I took it all apart it's on another video and put it all back together with some new bits and because they do get old but oh the other thing I forgot to mention another really plus point of using trunks of trees is that you know you're talking about bug hotels you don't want it to be just having bees in it solitary bees whereas if you use wood with bark on it it does slowly rot down and if I were to peel this bark off it would be full of things like pea bugs and centipedes and stuff like that because they just and wood boring beetles they just love they love to get between the trunk and the and the bark 
that's the perfect environment so it also serves a purpose there too so that's it really you know quite a quick one there I don't know how much use that's going to be I was just standing here thinking if I could only make one what would it be and that that's it so why don't you have a try and tweet me some pictures I'd love to see them and it's something you can get your kids involved with as well obviously be careful I mean I've I'm accident prone and using saws and drills obviously be careful but you can get the kids involved even if they're just watching or positioning it even there's loads they can get involved with but thanks for watching please like and subscribe and I'll speak to you soon